Hey, what's going on savers and investors? I hope you're all having a great day as always. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name's Griffin and I've been waiting quite a while now to make today's video. So now that most of the American cannabis companies have released their Q2 earnings figures, we're gonna be putting the top six companies head to head in a sort of industry comparison style video that everyone really seems to enjoy on this channel because it allows us to compare different companies that operate in a same industry and see which ones are performing best, rising to the top and basically just representing a better investment opportunity. Now, I did release this same sort of video a couple months back comparing four of the top Canadian marijuana companies, and I absolutely plan on releasing another video covering the same stocks and even a couple more that the audience has requested. The thing is, I'm still waiting on a couple of these companies to release their most up-to-date earnings figures. So if you are interested in seeing a part two of the Canadian marijuana stocks, then make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know that you'd like an update on companies like Afria Canopy and Aurora. So yes, today's video is featuring American companies. However, five out of the six that we're going to be speaking about are also available for trade in Canada on the Canadian Securities Exchange. So if you're Canadian and you want to get in on some of these stocks, not to worry, you can do so on the CSE. Typically, I do speak about companies that trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange. However, every once in a while, I like to switch it up and talk about different investment opportunities that I find interesting and that I think would be of value to the audience. FYI, I'm also in the middle of preparing a Q3 earnings analysis video of the big five banks in Canada with two more that were requested by the audience. So we're going to be comparing the Q3 numbers of all seven of the largest banks in Canada. So if you want to make sure to not miss that video, make sure to hit the bell button so that you're notified whenever I release new pieces of content. For today's video though, as mentioned, we're going to be heading south of the border and comparing six of the top American cannabis companies that were requested by viewers. And this includes True Live Cannabis Corp, ticker TCNN. F, Cura Leaf Holdings, ticker C-U-R-L-F, Green Thumb Industries, ticker G-T-B-I-F, Cresco Labs, ticker C-R-L-B-F, GW Pharmaceuticals, ticker G-W-P-H, and finally Harvest Health and Recreation, ticker H-R-V-S-F. Things have definitely ramped up since the beginning of the year for the cannabis industry with the use of cannabis products becoming increasingly widespread, especially during this period of social distancing. So this has resulted in increasing revenue figures for pretty much all companies across the board, which is somewhat to be expected, but this has also translated into many investors being quite bullish on most of these cannabis companies, which has resulted in increasing prices since the March lows. The data we're about to look at is very promising for investors and further bolsters my belief beliefs that as a mid to long term play, investing in many of these cannabis companies is going to be a great play for further appreciation of share value. Also keep in mind that in Canada, marijuana has only become legal as of 2018. And in the United States, more and more states are legalizing the use of cannabis for recreational and medical use. So even though there is still a long way to go in the US, things are becoming increasingly positive for the industry and consumption should increase year over year for decades to come. Now, one last thing before we dive into the data, if you are Canadian and want to purchase any of these stocks, you need to do so with a brokerage that carries stocks that trade on the CSE. My recommendation for a discount brokerage would be Quest Trade. This carries CSE stocks. And if you use one of the links down in the description, you can get $50 in free trades. Okay, so here we are on the Excel spreadsheet where I've listed the six stocks that we're going to be comparing today at the top with several blocks below containing relevant financial information about these companies, mostly for the recently reported quarter, which is Q2 2020. But we're also going to be comparing these figures throughout the sheet to Q1 2020 and Q2 2019 figures to highlight the growth of these stocks. Below the company names, we have their ticker symbols for OTC listings in the United States and then CSE listings in Canada, except for GW Pharmaceuticals, which is only available on the NASDAQ. So yes, as mentioned, these are all dual listed stocks. Other preliminary information to mention is that that all the stock prices and market capitalizations are as of August 20th after hours. That's the time that I'm filming this video. So market values will have changed by the time you watch this video, but all the financial information will remain the same nonetheless. And also everything in this sheet is reported in thousands of US dollars. So for example, with TrueLive Cannabis, their market cap is 2.4 billion and not 2.4 million. 
With that said, let's first start off with the current market cap and stock price of these six companies, with the largest of them all being Curaleaf Holdings at $4.178 billion in market cap and a stock price of $7.97 a share. Now, unlike the last video on the Canadian weed companies where I included the percent drop from 2018 levels, most of these companies only have stock data that goes back a year or so because they just became public companies. So instead, I've included a row that showcases the their lowest price in March and percent increase since then as a way to highlight which companies investors are most bullish on right now. And from this, we'll also be able to see if after such rallies, these stocks still have growth ahead of them. Moving on, Trulive has a market cap of $2.428 billion with a share price of $21.30, which is up 255% since March lows. And honestly, after such a run, it can be somewhat concerning that this type of growth won't be sustainable and therefore opportunity opportunity might be behind us, but with the industry still being in its infancy and most of these companies only starting to ramp up operations, as I said earlier, I would look at these stocks as mid to long term plays. Next up, Green Thumb Industries has a market cap of $2.995 billion, resulting from a share price of $14.30. Cresco Labs on the smaller size of today's stocks has a market cap of $1.371 billion and share price of only $6.82. Now, the next company being GW Pharmaceuticals that is only available on the NASDAQ is the only company on this list that focuses more on medicinal use as CBD products rather than selling flower and recreational products. Their market cap is $3.233 billion with a stock price of $109.46, which has grown the least since March lows. And finally, the smallest of the six here is Harvest Health and Recreation, a company based in Arizona with a market cap of only $471.885 million and a share price of $1.29, which happens to be up 126% since March lows. Now, from this first block of information relating to the company's market values and share prices, I think it's quite evident that investors are gaining confidence in this industry as they are posting increasing revenue figures from consumption levels rising in North America and abroad. We're about to dive into the revenue figures and growth of revenues right now, but before that, I do want to mention once again that investing in this industry is going to still have its fair share of speculation and risk because the reality is that based on the financials we're about to dive into, these are true growth stocks in an industry that is still fresh and has yet to establish a strong customer base in Canada, the United States, and worldwide. Most of these cannabis companies have been unprofitable since inception, but in contrast to say tech companies that were also seeing shoot to the moon without any earnings, the operations of marijuana companies are generally much more complex from a product production and distribution standpoint, so closing that gap on profitability is inherently more difficult and has yet to be materialized consistently for most of these companies. I really just wanted to mention that before we take a look at the revenue figures, but jumping into the first company, which is Curaleaf, their revenues for the most recent quarter were $117.48 million, which is actually up 58.73% since same quarter last year and happens to be up 21.75% since the previous quarter Q1 2020. I think it's safe to say that my prediction from last video has been materialized here as more individuals were at home hanging out during the months April through to June during the whole lockdown period and consumption of cannabis products drastically increased. Basically, every company here significantly increased their revenues from one quarter to the next, so there is definitely a correlation. And now that this use has increased with more individuals also venturing into the industry for the first time, this could very well be a turning point where consumption really starts ramping up for the foreseeable future. Moving on to TrueLive Cannabis, the revenues for the latest quarter were $120.765 million, which is up 52% since same quarter last year and happens to be up 25.72% since the previous quarter, which is absolutely phenomenal for both of these comparison periods, with sales having really surged for the company since last quarter. Interestingly, we're seeing a company here that has a market cap roughly half the size of Cureleaf with higher quarterly revenues, so we're going to be revisiting this later on in the video when speaking about relative value, but I thought I would highlight this right now. Next up is Green Thumb Industries 
Industries with revenues of $199.64 million in the latest quarter, and this is a company that has grown tremendously over the past year with a 62.62% revenue growth year over year. Now, if you hadn't noticed, I color-coded these cells with conditional formatting so that the highest growth is in dark green and then the least growth is in white. The following stock is Cresco Labs at $94.256 million in Q2 2020 revenues, which is actually the highest year-over-year -year revenue growth among all of these stocks at a staggering 68.29% and 42% since Q1 2020. This is honestly the type of growth that is exciting to see, but in the next section, we'll be looking at whether or not this growth is resulting from extremely high costs or not. Quickly moving through the two last companies, we have GW Pharmaceuticals at $121.297 million in revenues, representing a nice growth year-over-year, -year, but since Q1 2020, growth has basically been stagnant. And finally, by far the smallest company in market cap being Harvest Health and Recreation had revenues of $55.669 million for very impressive growth both year over year and since last quarter. So from these two blocks of data, what am I getting out of this? Well, obviously, it's evident that the sale of cannabis products and consumption has been dramatically increasing since lockdown periods, which has driven stock price points to rally extensively, most of them above 200%. As we clearly see from the revenue figure, these companies are in complete growth and expansion mode, with revenues increasing by double-digit percentages quarter over quarter, demonstrating that they are still in their infancy stage with consumption of cannabis in their countries of operation, increasing gradually over time as the industry matures. Just like I mentioned in the previous comparison video, we have to keep in mind here that not 2-3 years ago, this was a completely illegal product in North America that is going to require years if not generations to become mainstream and consumed by a wider audience on a larger scale. Now it goes without saying that it would have been favorable to get in on these stocks sooner sometime in March, but what we'll be trying to determine is whether or not there is still value to be had at these prices considering growth trends and current financial ratios for each of these companies. Let's now jump into the next block of figures to see if these companies are getting a better grip on their production and operating expenses, hopefully translating into positive operating income and even potentially net income. The way I've structured it for this video is that I have indicated the production costs for Q2 2020 and Q2 2019 as a percentage of the total sales to showcase whether or not the companies are producing these increasing revenue figures at a relatively more costly or less costly production cost. I hope that makes sense. Starting with Curaleaf, their production costs as a percentage of sales for Q2 2020 was 48.39%, while the same ratio for Q2 2019 was 46.34%, meaning yes, they are producing more revenue as we spoke about earlier, but their relative production costs have increased by roughly 2%. Now, this is completely normal for production costs to go up as revenues increase, of course, but it's favorable to see relative costs go down because right now we're seeing that, yeah, they are producing more, but it's also costing them more on a relative basis. Regardless, their operating margin has significantly increased since last year, which is fantastic and translates into operating income of 29 0.691 million. The operating income or loss basically means how much the company has left over when subtracting production costs and operating expenses from their revenues. Finally, as with most of these companies, net income is negative as they are reinvesting all of their earnings back into growth and expansion, which I would want to see anyways for this type of company. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of the production and margin numbers for each company because this video would be like an hour long and we still have lots to cover, but if you want to analyze this more in detail, feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot. I'll just cover the most important highlights starting with TrueLive Cannabis posting the highest operating income and operating margin for Q2 2020. This is accompanied with the fact that their relative production costs since last year have diminished by 10%, which is great to see and means it is costing them relatively less to produce more. Green Thumb has also posted a nice decrease in production costs with a significant increase in operating margin turning positive this year. Harvest Health is also looking very promising, especially as the smallest company here that has reduced the production cost as a percentage of sales by nearly 20% and has managed to just turn their operating margin positive from the worst operating margin last year. 
Finally, let's speak about GW Pharmaceutical, which let's remember is a producer of medicinal use CBD products mainly instead of flower and recreational use products like the other companies. While their relative production costs are very low, their operating expenses are extremely high, even surpassing revenue figures because they have extremely high research and development costs associated with their product line. For this reason, not only is their net income negative, but so is their operating income, which I'm really not a huge fan of, if I'm being honest. With that said, this analysis is strictly from a quantitative standpoint, and there is way more information that should be taken into account for this type of company. So if you want to learn more about them and why their costs are so high, I would recommend that you look into their actual earnings report. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these companies are true growth stocks with reinvestment of their earnings into expansion and market share capture, which is one of the reasons why they've been able to significantly increase their revenue figures, but net income has been lagging behind and we're going to be speaking about their relative value near the end of the video. All right, so now that we've had a chance to speak about revenues, let's take a look at their financial positions regarding assets and liabilities. The first row is the cash and cash equivalents of each company as of June 30th, 2020, and then we have the current assets and liabilities with the current ratio below. The liquid cash position of Cure Relief is 122.763 million with current assets of 340.14 million and current liabilities of 129.547 million, resulting in a current ratio of 2.63, which is very nice considering that these companies are in such growth mode right now. And this basically just means that Cure Relief could pay its current liabilities 2.6 times over using their current assets only. I like to see companies with a current ratio above two, so most of all these companies are checking out. But even at that, since these companies are experiencing explosive revenue growth, this isn't a huge issue for me because these companies are bringing in increasing revenues each quarter. From a total asset standpoint, we're seeing a 2.76% increase quarter over quarter, which is also positive to see, and a total ratio of 2.03. The lowest current ratio of the bunch is green thumb at only 1.14, which is significantly lower than what I like to see from a short-term risk and stability standpoint. But considering it had a 63% revenue increase since last year, chances are the company will be just fine in maintaining rapid growth without being at risk. Surprisingly, the best current ratio is GW Pharma at 5.80, which is mostly attributed to their significant $477 million cash position. To be honest, when looking at both of these data blocks containing information about the company's balance sheets, nothing too alarming really stands out due to the fact that I'm considering their revenue growth trends. They're basically growing their assets each quarter except for Harvest, but when looking at a broader view for that company specifically, each quarter before this one was showing nice growth. So basically these companies from what I can see here strictly from a numbers perspective aren't over leveraging themselves but are still managing to increase their top line figures at an exponential rate. This should allow them to weather nicely through any potential future hiccups. The next section is quite short and pertains to the investments the companies have been making over the last 12 months in regards to company acquisitions and investments in property. Just to summarize, investments through acquisition have been pretty much halted except for Cure Relief at $43.688 million to acquire other companies. Investments in properties have been more common but nonetheless have not been prominent in the past 12 months as it would appear the companies are reinvesting back into production and operating expenses to pump out more product, which isn't a bad thing. Let's now move on to the next block of figures to speak more about the company's relative value and how expensive they are considering earnings and revenues. Now, obviously, since five of these six companies are not yet profitable, their trailing 12 months price to earnings ratios are not available because they aren't pulling in any positive earnings except for True Live Cannabis, which surprisingly has a trailing 12 months price to earnings of 19.4%. 49, which honestly isn't even that bad. However, what I would sooner look at right now is these companies' current price to trailing 12 months of revenues because these companies are not focused on net earnings yet, but rather on rapid expansion and growth of revenues. As we can see, when dividing the current market price by their trailing 12 months of revenues, which is seen on this line right here, things start to become much clearer. The cheapest stock relative to its revenues is Cresco Labs at a market price of 2.64 times revenues and the most expensive is GW Pharma at a market price of 54 times revenues. 
Most of these companies are expected to turn a profit over the next 12 months, still at relatively high price to earnings ratios, but nonetheless, these are growth stocks that aren't focused on turning a profit just yet. Cresco Labs' current price to sales ratio in combination with their unreal growth in revenues year over year and quarter over quarter is very intriguing to me and stands out. Harvest also has a low price to sales ratio of only 3.31, which considering that the stock hasn't rallied as much as the others since March, they are posting fantastic earnings growth and their total assets of 834 million are roughly double their current market cap. Just think about that for a second. I see this as being a great opportunity to buy in at cheap asset with nice growth. Except for GW Pharma that is trading at an insane price point, even though these companies have rallied tremendously since March lows, their relative value is actually not too bad right now and sales should continue to skyrocket over the next 12 months, further increasing the value of these companies. Keep in mind that it's difficult in this type of side-by-side -side comparison to really dig into anything that has to do with qualitative elements coming into play for each company, but I really hope this video is able to provide you with the relevant financial data to make a better investment decision. Finally, let's look at a theoretical example of what the price to earnings ratios would be if these cannabis companies managed to produce a net earnings figure that were to match the average net income ratio of the tobacco industry, which happens to be around 13.77%. Based on these theoretical figures, the price to earnings ratios would still be quite high across the board for these cannabis companies, with most of them still above 50, which is very high. So what does this really tell us as investors? Well, for starters, it amplifies amplifies the idea that these companies have yet to really find their stride in an industry that has had the time to establish itself and normalize its own set of ratios. What I mean by this is that the energy, utility, tech, and every other industry has their own set of acceptable ratio figures that are used as benchmarks by investors, but the cannabis industry is so fresh that historical data isn't substantial and all we can really do is compare it to similar industries for reference and look at how quickly the revenue figures are growing. One thing that's certain is that cannabis companies will have to focus on significantly reducing the cost of production of their cannabis products to increase their profit margin as well as reduce the operating costs, which are both significantly cutting into their profit margin. This is a reoccurring theme throughout all of the companies that we've looked at here, and for the most part, it seems to be improving as these companies are establishing themselves, which is definitely good to see. From what I see after conducting this analysis, most of these companies are actually quite promising, even at their current price points, but if I had to choose two based on everything considered, I would probably choose Cresco for their tremendous growth in revenues, nice asset growth, and relative price to trailing 12 months of revenues and the second I would go with would probably have to be a harvest due to their price to sales, nice growth, relatively low price increase since March and extremely high assets to price even though it's definitely higher risk than some of the others because of its smaller size. With that said, I think the overall theme that we're seeing in this industry right now is growth across the board and opportunity long term for pretty much any one of these companies. Okay, so we've covered a lot of financial data and information in this video but with everything we just covered, what are my final thoughts on this analysis? First of all, as I had mentioned in my last cannabis industry comparison video, even though these cannabis stocks are rallying right now, if you're looking to put some money into them as a genuine investment, I would sooner look at these as long-term plays as this industry matures and these companies start posting consistent earnings and revenue growth, which I do believe will set in over the coming years. Also keep in mind that the cannabis stocks featured in this video are true growth stocks that aren't as stable and aren't paying out dividends, so it's really important that you fully understand what you're investing in after conducting proper research and only investing the portion of your investing funds that you have reserved for higher risk investment opportunities. The total potential cannabis industry in the United States is absolutely massive with a society of high consumers that should only grow and become more favorable for these companies as legislations pass in favor of the industry and more individuals become comfortable with these types of products. As I predicted, Q2 figures have soared across this industry as people are at home hanging out more than ever and I really believe we'll continue seeing these figures climbing higher and higher over the coming years. 
That pretty well wraps up today's video comparing these six cannabis companies. I really hope you enjoyed the content and that it provided value to you. And I'd love to know your thoughts on both the stocks in question as well as the whole cannabis industry itself on the short to even long term. So let me know down in the comments what you thought about this video and the stocks in question. And while you're down there, make sure to drop a like on the video. It really helps the channel grow. If you're interested in watching any of my other industry comparison videos, make sure to check out one of the two that I'm overlaying right here. And I would highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel because I release content on a weekly basis speaking about stock market related topics and company analysis. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.